thanks for joining me on my trip here. You can see that uh, I've come up quite a ways. My Jeep is down towards the bottom there. It's been keeping this uh, Goy or Royal here on my right hand side. Uh, returning, so it's on my left hand side as I'm going. And uh, it'll help me give me a little direction. This way. You can see the sky's pretty gray. You're talking about some rain. At this elevation is about 10,000 feet. It means snow. And so I've been kind of wary of that. Um, doesn't look like it. It looks like most of it went south. That's south and west of us. And so um, not not too worried about it. Uh, I drove down where I can hike up here. Hopefully on top of this ridge there will be a good uh, vantage point. There's a flat top grassy area somewhere in the mountains up here and it's the elks summers I'm feeding. Because it's been so warm uh, up in the 40s and 50s in the daytime, the elk haven't moved down yet so I'm having to go up to them. Giving me quite the workout but tag along. Yep that's me Nathaniel Schultz and this is my YouTube channel. I share a lot of my cross-country adventures, try to be informative, and just share a lot of the fun that I have. I work hard, and I play hard, and hope that this channel inspires you to do the same. Is that not awesome or what? I just absolutely love it. It's really not that cold, but breezy and just so beautiful. So beautiful. This is uh, just south of Steamboat Springs. I like that view too. So, yeah, the one is on your way to work, please. Getting close to the top. Well, my buddies are leaving me. They're heading on to hunt. I left my horse go with them. And I'm going to sit up on a ledge, back side of the mountains here. So pretty. If I was a little closer, you could see uh, down over that edge in the vast expanse. Horse here looking towards the west somewhat. Um, I'm gonna come up along this edge here. I got a real good view. I got the aspens down there. Down this cliff here. And a lot of good grass out there. So I'm gonna walk a little further over. And uh,
see. So, as you saw, they left on the horses. I'm a little out of breath because uh, the horse, I think, has been winded before. It was just breathing something terrible and uh, couldn't quite uh, hack the climb. And the guy who was riding him uh, isn't the healthiest. Uh, so I let him ride my horse and I got off and, and hiked up. And uh, it's about 10,000 feet, I think. I think that's about where we're at. And uh, it's a little more than I'm used to. So uh, I headed up here just really enjoying uh, the peacefulness and the scenery. Just look at that. The only sound that you ever hear from civilization is the sound that I hear a little bit right now, and that's the rumbling of a jet. Everything else is gone. It's so, so awesome. Back around. So, I think I'm going to sit up in these boulders here. I think the elk really like moving around in that aspen. They do come out here to graze, and I want to make sure that I'm not totally skylined, but I do want to see all this back here as well. So, I'm going to sit up on one of these rocks here. So sitting here on these rocks, what this bluff here, and I'll overlook. It's thinking about the timelessness. In fact, it's a jawbone in the rocks on this edge of this cliff, and I was thinking about the things that I'm doing and the efforts that I'm making and how many of them bear timeless results. And there's not a whole lot that we do that does that. It just seems like uh, our life gets so busy with so many things that it's hard for us to really see the things that matter. So I can, you know, in a day run around and do 20 things and only five of them really made an impact. Uh, so the thoughts that I'm having here, uh, sitting and uh, hunting really, I don't know if you can hear how quiet it is. It's amazing. And uh, just a lot of good thoughts. On my first hunt this morning, uh, we hiked up from the camp, actually uh, took horses up, uh, at about 4.35, uh, got up here by 6.30, uh, it's still dark, and I sat down just over the hill there in those aspens, it's hard to see, and I found that you could come up here, and uh, so we, we stayed out, and ended up taking a good ride around, that's when I found this place, and uh, then, we, then we went back down, and I got on another horse uh, that we needed to uh, find out how it rode because it was acting a little crazy whenever they brought it and uh, to make sure it could take a ride we're going to ride a couple hours up into the mountains tomorrow uh, and so this is an hour and a half at best but uh, we want to make sure that that horse is going to act right before we take off on it and uh, I rode a uh, rode it for just a minute and uh, played in my, my Jeep for about five minutes down this little road that goes up through the creek and then uh, climbed on the horses to come back up here so just got up here just got settled in uh, I haven't looked at my phone but I think it's about four maybe about four um, 
So I've got a couple hours to sit and ponder to love God's creation. And uh, back to what I started on was to consider what I was going to do in my life uh, that's timeless. So um, I know that there's a couple things that I can do, and that's to uh, to make sure that what I'm doing isn't for me, it's for my family that comes after me. And uh, for others, there's always opportunity to do things for others. And then beyond that, uh, it's the kingdom of God. And I put it in that order because the Bible says that you have to take care of your family, that uh, you're worse than an infidel if you don't. And uh, in other words, it, you're, not, you're not one of God's children if you won't take care of your own family. So take care of your family is part of... Uh, doing something for the kingdom of God because it's your children and your family where you have to lead and be right before you come back and uh, and try to lead others. And you, you hear me say all this. Uh, of course, I'm not married at this point. Um, but I'm looking ahead, looking at the Word of God, looking at other great mentors in my life and uh, what I'm thinking on anyway. So take it for that. But uh, I'm going to get back to my hunt then, and we'll uh, chat with you later. This is that valley I sat watching yesterday.
talking about. We just spotted an elk herd in those woods on the top. He saw us and we're moving. So we're getting up into the high parts of the mountains here. I'm not really sure where they're gonna go from here. But we're following. Say hi, man. Yeah. Like how do you decide where you want to Yeah, I think I could camp in these rocks here and then have the view. And uh long range though. Fun coming up, let's do. Well, 
Ну, где That's a crazy hike.
thanks for joining me on my trip here. You can see that uh, I've come up quite a ways. My Jeep is down towards the bottom there. This. I've been keeping this uh, Goy or Royal here on my right hand side. Uh, returning so it's on my left hand side as so I'm going and uh, it'll help me give me a little direction this way you can see the sky is pretty gray you're talking about some rain at this elevation is about 10,000 feet it means snow and so I've been kind of wary of that um, doesn't look like it it looks like most of it went south that south and west of us and so um, not not too worried about it. Uh, I drove down where I can hike up here. Hopefully on top of this ridge and there will be a good uh, vantage point. There's a flat top grassy area somewhere in the mountains up here and it's the elks summers I'm feeding. Because it's been so warm uh, up in the 40s and 50s in the daytime, the elk haven't moved down yet so I'm having to go up to them. Giving me quite the workout. But tag along. Pretty rough, but not rock climbing. Lots of grit on some stairs, just elk uh, do everywhere. Um, now that I'm at the top, I haven't peeked over yet, but I'm sure of where I am. Um, if you look over here, you'll see a circular field back there. The camp is below that. Um, I also know that because of that wall. See how there's a, uh, like a wall that sticks up out of that mountain. That overshadows the camp. Let's go down this valley. And my Jeep is down. You see that trail? And it turns and cuts up this way. It winds around. Comes up and ends about right there. My Jeep is somewhere right in there. But you look over here, and uh, there is a 
wall along the top. That's the flat tops. That was my goal to get to. I didn't quite make it. Um, there should be a trail right along the top, top of these woods. And uh, it's all dark for a forest. So pretty cool. I like being in it. I don't want to stay too late and get dark. But up on those rocks right there is where the set of elk were yesterday those rocks there um whenever uh we shot and just, i didn't actually shoot two of the other guys did while i was holding the horses but that's that so it's so again kind of see uh, the climb that i made how pretty of an evening it is that was just over an hour, so it's about 3.30. Um, and uh, it gets dark around 6.30. So really, I got three hours. Um, I'm going to be coming down this at night, not using a flashlight. If I use a flashlight, it destroys my night vision. And that's very important here for being able to read the features of the land. If I can't read the features of the land as I come down, I'll be lost. Because with a flashlight, I can only see what's in front of my beam. And I don't know if you can tell, but this land all looks the same. And then those scrub oak, they don't look like it. Those can be up to 10 foot tall. Um, those, those are poplar. Those poplar down there are regular trees. Those right there, maybe 10, 12. Okay, so when you get in there, uh, there's a million and one places that you could be. And as I'm going to be working my way over there... I'm going to want to follow down that valley. Um, and that's probably what I'm going to do coming down through those uh, those little valleys there full of aspens is what those are. So here we go. I'm headed up here. Darkwood forest, they call it, but there's a lot of fir, some spruce mixed in. That's what we're headed to up there on top. If you can see, there's uh, that wall I was talking about. So, we're gonna see what we can do to get up there. I think I've got a good two and a half, three hours of daylight left. So now that we came through a long meadow, we're going to enter back into dark timber. We're right underneath this butte that we talked about. The dark timber I was in came out and then fallen along the edge of the line here. So this trail here goes to the bottom and then turns to the right and that's where we'll be going in. The trail leads out into this high meadow. 
left above is the flat tops. You're out in the middle of this meadow. An elk ran up. I think we must have scared him out of those aspens. He ran up. Get out of those aspens. He ran up along that rock ledge. The first batch that we saw. Up there, and they turned and went up on the flat top. Second batch is the batch. Okay, right there, they went up on top, and then over into the woods on the other side. Whenever they were shooting at them, of course now I'm up here alone. It's very peaceful. It's in the evening time. Not a whole lot of daylight left. I'm still trying to decide if I should tackle the hill. I mainly just wanted to sit and watch this valley and see if I could, uh, you know, see any game out and about on it. Um, if you look over here, that mountain, which you could see in my other videos, was way further away. So we've migrated, I'd say probably two miles in this direction. And we'll be able to come down the mountain here. And I need to be coming down before dark in order to find out exactly where I am. The cool part is that it removes some of your autonomy. Meaning you're no longer a person all to yourself. Which is strange because as alone as I am up here, I realize and understand my smallness. And uh, I just went over some lion tracks. I had some pictures of some bear tracks right up there from yes uh, the day before yesterday. Time comes and goes, but it don't change the land. It don't change nature uh, or God's laws so it's just amazing to see all of this uh, huge expanse and wonder and to realize my place in it and that I have a piece and I have a part in all of this creation it's amazing how as a person I, I like to be alone yet being up here also makes me appreciate people that much more. And I realize that my part isn't in nature per se, it's in humanity. And within all this creation to do and to treat humanity in the way that it should be treated. And I'm just so tickled to be up here to be experiencing this and all of the, uh, the just vast uh, creation, uh, you know, for a couple hundred miles anyway, in any direction, but a thousand miles in either direction, north and south, it's nothing but wild mountains, expanse. Hey guys, I feel like I'm on the edge of the world here, and in a lot of cases I am. You can see that rock wall out that way, over an expanse, and I'm standing in that way. So, it actually took me three hours to get up here. Uh, I 
going to stop for probably more than uh, a minute or two at a time. Just enough to keep the sweat down and I'm afraid I've sweated quite a bit. I've got about an hour before dark and I've been trying to decide. Hey there Ravens. Hey there. What y'all up to? Hey, don't be dropping stuff on me. Anyway, down the edge of that point down there, I think that there's a slope. The way it looks by the map, that road actually ends up down because that valley traces along and it ends up really close. So what I should have done was I should have been down there and climbed up to here. Now it's a heck of a climb because you're climbing all at once, but I'd rather that than all the slow gradual climbs, steep climbs, and then working my way over. So I think I'm going to walk down that point and then uh, drop down it, uh, down to that road. By then it'll be dark, I'm sure, and then uh, walk that road back and I can find my Jeep uh, because it's on a trail that comes off the road and I know where the trail leads the road. Uh, so I think that's what I'm going to do. I contemplated kind of spending the night up here. I do have a uh, knife with fire starter, of course my 44 Magnum, and then a good old uh, hatchet over here. Uh, the thing about that is I'm not dressed warmly at all. Uh, worse than that, I've been sweating. And so I'm worried it's windy up here. I could uh, find a little shelter up in these rocks, build a fire, but I know that I'm going to be up all night keeping that fire stoked where I'm going to be cold. And I'll probably be cold anyway. So I think I'd go ahead. I am pretty wore out. This altitude has got me pretty good. Um, but I think I'm going to go ahead. Um, there we go. Okay. Does that work? I think I'm going to go ahead and walk that way and then walk down. I hate to do that and then climb right back up here in the morning. But I think that's what I'm going to need to do uh, seeing as uh, my condition. I didn't bring backpack, food, water. My lips are dry and cracked. It's, uh, it's been sunny, very windy, and of course dry. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's what it is. And uh, so I'll let you know whenever I'm over there. There's elk tracks everywhere here. I believe it'll be a really good place uh, to, to look around and hunt. So. All right, well, it's about 6.30. Like I said, it's getting pretty dark. And uh, as you can see, those are those mountains. These are these mountains coming down. So we just gotta make it down this hill. Uh, way, way up there. And, uh, and I'll be there. I can hear the river running. Boy, that feels good. And once I make it down there, I'll just have to walk up the road about a mile, I'm guessing. Maybe two, a mile and a half. And uh, then I'll go up the trail that my Jeep is on. Well, I've about made it to the road. It's right down there. You can see some orange glow. There's a camp and a campfire. So it's kind of cool. Ooh, I definitely worked up a sweat though. A little bit of light and the moon. And the moon up there. 